Here we present the case of a 51 years old male patient that presented with several years progression history of severe visual loss. He has a homonymous immunopsia and a dense optic neuropathy, especially on the left eye. Here we can see the imaging that shows a complex supracellular mass with retroinfundibular extension. There is expansion of the cell and this suggests a pituitary mass. We perform an endoscopic and initial approach, including exposure of the cell after all the cella, anterior wall of the carpenter sinus bilaterally, and all the way anterior, including the precosmetic sulcus up to the level of the limbus sphenidale. We are drilling all the way up to the lateral optic rotted recess or optic strut, and this completes our exposure. Note how the limbus sphenidale represents a key landmark in the approach. We open the dura in a cruciate fashion, and then we identify a thin layer of pituitary gland in front of the tumor that we dissected, and now we enter into the tumor mass to take some pieces for biopsy, and we started the bulking using the two sections, and now we identify the plane between the pituitary gland and the tumor. We use a dissector, a micro dissector, to separate carefully the capsule of the pituitary tumor from the pituitary gland. Now we are looking at the dura that forms the posterior wall of the cella at the level of the dorsum cellae, and we have dissected the tumor off the middle wall of the carpenter sinus on the right side, which is not invaded. We have separated the tumor from the walls of the cella. And now we're going to go after the supracellular component of the tumor. I'm opening the dura here in an oblique fashion across the limbus of the sphenoid. And I think this is a very important key step when opening the dura into the supracellular space because it provides early identification of the optic nerves bilaterally, as you can see on the left side here. Now, this tumor has subarachnoidal in invasion, and this is why I'm doing this. Uh, direct cisternal approach and trying to find an arachnid plane so I can separate the tumor capsule from the surrounding arachnid layer. This will help me preserving the neurovascular structures that adhere to the tumor capsule. We can see the right optic nerve. We can see there the anterior cerebral artery, A1 second on the right side. And we can see some branches of what is most likely uh, the superior hypoxial artery system. As you see, I'm trying to define a plane between the arachnoid and the tumor that will help me preserving these superior hypoxial artery branches. It is key to preserve those branches that go to the optic apparatus and also to the infundibulum. At the same time, we know that the superior hypoxial artery provides also vascularization to the uh, diaphragma, and this is probably the case with this small branch they were dissecting. Again, note how we are using the arachnid plane to separate the neurovascular structures from the tumor capsule. We are finally dissecting off this branch of the superhypoxial artery and using the arachnid plane to bring the tumor down. With gentle retraction, we can see the interface between the tumor and the optic apparatus and the attachment of all the superior hypoxial branch, superior hypoxial artery branches that are irrigating the optic apparatus. After the bulking, I can continue with my extra capsular dissection. I can find the main trunk of the superior hypoxial artery posteriorly, and I can continue doing an intracapsular the bulking, and I will just leave a layer of arachnoid to protect the branches on the other side. We can see also here the arachnoid layer that forms the liliquous membrane and with the bulky tumor all the way there. Now we're looking at the superior hypoxial artery branches on the left side of the tumor. Here the tumor extends superolaterally and I'm going to be carefully dissecting these branches off the tumor capsule. Again, this is a combination of the bulking of the tumor 
with extra capsular dissection. I've been able to separate the branches carefully. And now I continue dissecting this tumor that is now extending underneath the optic chasm and behind the optic chasm into the retrochasmatic and retro infundibular space. We continue with the bulking of the tumor. We identify some additional branches of the suprahypoxial artery. These are very adherent to the capsule of the tumor, but carefully dissect them. And at this point, we start thinking about the location of the pituitary stalk. And here we can see the pituitary stalk posteriorly and how the tumor is very adherent to the stalk. We preserve the branches going to the pituitary stalk and we just debulk the tumor that is adjacent to it while preserving the tissue of the pituitary stalk, part of the liquid membrane. And if we look behind the stalk and liquid membrane, we can see the P1, the posterior communicating artery, and the mammillary bodies, basilar bifurcation at the interpeduncular system. Now we're looking up with a 45 degree endoscope into the retro chasmatic space. We can see the severe mass effect on the optic chasm. And we are looking at the last residual tumor. At this point, we have completed the resection of the tumor. P come on the left side, all the perforating branches, the stalk going up to the third ventricle. And here we pursue the reconstruction, fat graft, duragen layer, and now our uh, nasoceptal flap. Unfortunately, seven days post-op, the patient presented with meningitis and a lack of septal flap enhancement on MRI. This is typical of a necrosis of the nasoceptal flap, so we took the patient back to the open room. We had to transect the flap. We confirmed that it had no vascularization, so we had to redo the reconstruction. And in this case, we used a, an inferior turbinate or lateral nasal wall flap that is being harvested right now on the uh, left uh, nasal cavity. It is very important to recognize this entity of the nasal flap necrosis. It presents with meningitis typically, not necessarily a CSF leak, and a lack of enhancement on the MRI. And it's typically due to technical uh, difficulties in harvesting the flap. So now the way we do the reconstruction is we use a facial graft that is covering all the defect and using what was left of the pedicle of the septal flap to cover the bottom of the reconstruction and now I'm bringing up the inferior turbinate flap to cover the skull base defect. As you see, the uh, lateral nasal wall flap does not cover the whole defect but provides vascular supply to the reconstruction and I, I believe this is the key of uh, successful reconstruction. In conclusion, the patient had an excellent recovery with a very good outcome, with complete resection of this very complex tumor. We can see here in the post-operative MRI, the inferior turbinate flap is nicely reconstructing the skull base defect. We see a stock preservation, and this is the post-operative visible field examination with improvement and no post-operative pituitary dysfunction.